Hi. Today we are talking all things hard drive related for the Atari emulator. As you can see there are a few options available to us. Atari emulates four different types of hard drive. These are ACSI, which was the Atari Computer Systems Interface, IDE, which was the Integrated Drive Electronics Interface, SCSI, or the Small Computer Systems Interface, and GEMDOS, which is a, yeah, an emulator specific format. So the Atari Computer System Interface was the original hard drive interface on the Atari ST. As a protocol, it's very similar to SCSI to be truthful, but not as flexible. The Atari format allows data to be transferred at a maximum rate of 1.25 megabytes a second. This uses the built-in DMA capabilities of the Atari ST. You can have up to seven devices installed on your Atari system. It's interesting that this is actually one of those areas where if you configure the application through the built-in preferences, the, the slightly more ugly looking one, you can actually configure all seven. If you do it through the Macintosh's preference pane, you can only configure one of each type. So that's worth bearing in mind. So the ACSI format was implemented on all Atari ST computers and the TT, but it was not present on the Falcon. The next format is IDE. IDE was an internal bus in the Atari Falcon that allowed laptop sized hard drives to be installed inside the Falcon. I'm not going to comment much on IDE as it's pretty niche even for the Atari line. But if you are emulating a Falcon and you want to use IDE as your drive format, you have to have TOS version 205 or greater or you won't be able to boot from the IDE hard drive. Our third option is the SCSI, Small Computer Systems Interface, or SCSI standard. Uh, this was a, a, an industry-wide standard mechanism used on many, many different types of computers. It was also used to connect different types of devices to the host computer, not just hard drives, but scanners, CD-ROMs, all sorts of stuff. Devices were daisy-chained together and there, ha there was a use of terminating resistor packs on these daisy chains that was quite confusing. However, we're a software emulation, not a hardware, so we'd have to worry about that. You can think of SCSI almost like a prototypical USB bus. It was just a lot less capable. SCSI was only available on the Atari TT and the Falcon computers only. And if you try to mount one on an ST in Atari, they just will not work. Our final format that we're going to talk about today is GEMDOS. I mean, GEMDOS is perhaps the most useful hard drive type. With GEMDOS, you can map a folder or folders on your host machine to act as drives on the emulated device. This gives you the massive advantage that you can use the Finder on your Mac or Windows Explorer to move files around, order stuff, which is many, many times faster than trying to use the ST interface. Anything that installs its own GDOS handler, however, something like Mint, will not work with GEMDOS. They need to be run from a real hard drive image. I was caught out by this when I first used Atari. I was trying to get Speedo GDOS to work. It would install, but after a reboot, it complained that it couldn't have found its sys files. Just some final odds and ends to talk about. The maximum size of a partition that are supported by an ST depends on the version of the Trammell operating system that you're using. So TOS 1.0 and 1.02 had support for partitions of up to 256 megabytes. TOS 1.04 up to 3.06 could support partitions of 512 megabytes. And the last version of TOS version 4 supported partitions of up to one gigabyte. I mean, considering my first Atari hard drive was 15 megabytes, you know, these partition, maximum partition size are sufficiently large for any use you're going to have for it. We're going to head over to Atari in a second and we're going to set up a useful hard drive configuration. What we're going to do is we're going to create a single ACSI drive as the big device. That'll be our drive C and two GEMDOS local folders as drives D and E. So this covers all the useful configurations of hard drives. But first, I want to talk about the emulator folder structure. In the videos up to now, I've been putting all the files needed for Atari in a single folder, storing it on my desktop. That's not really a, a workable solution ongoing. So I'm going to bring a little bit of structure to my uh, 
Atari config. So I've renamed my top level folder to Atari and I've added three subfolders, HDD, system and software. HDD is where my hard disk images go. So my ACSI hard drive, which will be our drive C and the GEMDOS partitions that will form our D and E. The software folder contains any software or utilities for the ST that I'll be installing later. These get dragged into the GEMDOS partitions and installed from there. Finally, the system folder is where my Hitari config files go. There could be multiple of these in the future. And a folder where I store all the different TOS images that I may need for different configurations. Let's get our boot drive working. So our C drive is going to be a single ACSI drive. So we need an image for that. Now that there are two ways we can get an image. We can create one using DD, or we can download one off the internet. Myself, I'm always a fan of downloading off the internet. So let's head on over to the Hatari website. We'll go to the downloads page, scroll right to the very bottom, and there you will see the 80 megabyte ACSI image. So I'm going to download that and I'm just going to stick it in my HDD folder. So let's mount our drive image that we just downloaded onto our Atari instance. We're going to go to settings and then hard disks. And then under the ACSI settings, we're going to select browse. Now we're going to locate our download image. As I said earlier, that image is stored in my HDD folder under my desktop. Once we've attached that image, if we go back to the main menu, but before we quit, that'll cause a reboot. We need to remember to save our configuration into the default Hatari config, just so it's remembered past reboot. I mean, we've been caught out by that before. So once we quit the menu, a restart is prompted. We'll accept that and we'll allow it to reboot. Post reboot, as you can see, we have an 80 meg drive partitioned into four drives, C, D, E, and F. That's all well and good, but that's not what I wanted. I wanted a single C drive, which was ACHI, which was 80 megabytes. And so what we're going to need to do is repartition our drive. Repartitioning disks is not actually built into the operating system. Disks, hard drives are kind of an afterthought, I guess. So we use a third party tool called HDX, and I found my copy of that on the open source disk floppy shop utility 4638. Snappy name. So there's a direct link to that in the description below. And I found that image on the brilliant site atariuptodate.de. I mean, that's just your go to source for ST images. I'll link to that below as well. I downloaded the disk image and I put it in my software folder under my Atari root folder, the one that I described earlier. After mounting that image as drive A, I open the drive and then navigate to the folder ADHI and I run the hdx.prg application. Then we wait a bit. So once the app is up and running, we select the partition from the disk menu. Then we wait a bit. So once the dialogue surfaces, click OK on the scary warning message after reading it at least twice because it's scary. So then select the partition ACHI0 and click OK. So on the next screen, you need to click on the partition size box for the partitions two to four and make sure they change to unused. I actually do that in the order four, three, two. I'm not sure if that's necessary or not. Finally, click the up arrow next to the partition size of partition one until it takes up the entire 80 meg and click OK. Now, again, read the really scary dialogue that pops up and click OK with, with abandon. So 
So the partitioning process is relatively sprightly, actually, it doesn't take long. And then finally, you select File, Quit, Confirm the Reboot, and then Post Reboot, we have our desired single partition of 80 megabytes labeled as Drive C. Job done. To create our two GEMDOS partitions, we need to create a folder to be their roots. In my case, I've created a folder named GEMDOS, and inside that I've put two subfolders, one named D and one named E. Each of those folders has a single text file in it that contains a drive name. This is just so we can test it later. If the folder you select for GEMDOS has no subfolders, then that folder itself will become a single GDOS drive on your Atari. And for many cases, that's just probably what you want. So to do this, let's open a settings panel and navigate to the hard disk section under GEMDOS and select browse. Browse to your GEMDOS root folder. You can see here I'm already in the right folder from a previous run through of this, which I stuffed up because I forgot to press the record button. We're going to enable, <laughs> we're going to enable a couple of options. Select Add GEMDOS folders after ACSI and other partitions. So we want our ACHI drive to be the C drive. And then we want to check Boot from Hard Drive. Let's go back to the main menu and save our configuration before the mandatory restart. Post reboot, we see our two GEMDOS D and E drives. And a quick test shows us that the two drives contain the expected readmes and those files contain the correct content. Finally, I'm going to configure my ST for the rest of its life. So I'm going to switch to medium resolution. I'm going to rearrange my desktop content to suit my preferences. And finally, save my desktop configuration. This file is saved in the file emudesk.inf if you're using emutos. And now that we're booting from the C drive, once saved, the configuration will persist across restarts. So let's pop in a quick restart here. And once the ST is back up and running, we see our once and future desktop. So this is an ideal time to shut down Atari Back up your AHCI disk image and your Hatari.cfg. You can use these as a basis for future machines and it'll prevent you from having to go through all that partitioning again just by reusing this MD image. So I hope you enjoyed this three part series on configuring Hatari. In the next videos, I'll be concentrating on the ST side of things rather than the emulator. It's kind of time for Hatari to fade into the background and just do its thing. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.